Hi there, booktube! My name is Cristina and today I'm here in order to film the wrap-up for the Cosiathon, which was, I believe, one of my favorite readathons up till now. I loved it so much because it was actually very nice to do, it was even relaxing in a way, and it helped me to get to some books that I really wanted to read, so it was a very win-win situation for me. And the readathon ended on the 14th Sunday, basically, and I'm trying to film it just the next week. I'm sorry for the scarf and for my voice and everything else, it's just that I'm not feeling very well and I'm right back from work, so I'm filming it and after I will literally jump in my pyjamas and right into the bed. So makeup helps in these cases. I need to get out there the challenges that I wasn't able to face. The first one was to read in a bathtub and I really wanted to accomplish that one but when I was hoping to get around it I started feeling sick so I pretty much went with showers. Then I listened to one audiobook, I started listening to the second book in The Raven Cycle written by Maggie C. Potter, but I just simply listened to it. I've not baked while doing so, I've not made any kind of exercise, I was pretty awful during these two weeks. Yeah, and the last one that I've not done at all was the one about treating yourself with a book. Just because I actually bought some books in the period before and I'm really trying to limit myself in buying new books, so I really wish to buy next books just for the jar extraction for winter. And I'm very sorry if you're hearing a buzzy noise, it's just that I'm trying this camera with the autofocus, but I'm realizing that then I have this noise in my videos that I have to edit and I hate it. Even if I'm not moving, focus on me. <laughs> so I will probably try to film again in manual mode. Then I have two challenges that I've not completed, like not completely completed. I was reading the collection of horror stories written by Poe and I stopped somewhere around page 150, I believe, yes, and I'm slowly going through it, it's just that this is a kind of book that I cannot read in one sitting from the beginning till the end, because his way of writing is very dense and some of his stories are very interesting, some others are not so, so I'm slowly going through it, but I cannot read it just in one sitting, so I've not completed this one. Then I have the unfinished audiobook and the reread. Actually, to reread your all time favorite was the one about which I was so excited, and it was the read of Harry Potter. But for some very, very strange reason, I'm putting it aside like as far as I can. I want to read it so much, but at the same time, I don't want to because I don't want it to finish. But it's just the first book, so it doesn't make any sense, like at all. And it's not the first time when I will reread Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, so I don't know what's happening with me. I want to read it, it's on my bed constantly, and I just like look at it and pet the book and then read something else. I don't know what to do with myself. But now let's get to the next books that I've read during the Cosiathon. And the first one was the first in the Fairy Oak trilogy. I've already spoken about this book so much. I loved rereading it. It took me like one day, maybe two days. I just loved it. It's a lovely story. It's middle grade or even children's book. You may start reading it from eight years old. So it's really for everyone, but still it has a lovely message. It has those perfect autumnal vibes and the feeling of coziness, magic in a little town. I don't know, I just love it and now I cannot wait to get to the second and the third and just to continue with the series because I'm loving it so much. And 
Actually, when I tweeted about this book, the author herself answered me and I was so excited and so happy, like a little child, so yay! The second book that I've read was something that I wanted to read for quite a long, but I was somehow always putting it aside and now I decided to just jump into it and it was 5 to 1, written by Holly Potter and this book was quite unique. It's written from two different points of view. Part of the book is written in a normal way and part of it is written almost like a poem, so it's very interesting and it's a book set in this kind of a dystopian setting in India where there are more boys than girls and so for each girl there are five boys competing in order to marry her and the aim of it is to create a female child. So the message is very hard, even if I really appreciated how easily it conveyed the whole message and it deals with gender equality, it deals with the matter of poverty, it deals with a lot of social matters as the social pressure that we put sometimes on someone and freedom and a lot of other very important messages. They were just condensed in this very small book. I really loved how interesting the message was and how it was conveyed. And if it happens to you, just try and read it. Maybe it won't be your favorite read of all times, but definitely by the end of it, you will have some points that you will consider deeply and about which you will think and rethink in the future. So it's a very interesting book. The next book that I've read was this lovely book. I just love the cover of it. This is Tuck Everlasting, written by Natalie Babbitt. Babbitt? I don't know. And it's my first book written by her. I discovered that she wrote so many more and now I'm quite curious to get to the next ones. And this is the book on which the Tuck Everlasting movie was based, of course. And I actually made sum up this book with just the question on the cover. What if you could live forever? And it's the story of this 10 years old girl who discovers that there is a family around the place where she lives that's pretty much immortal and it all starts there. This book is very slow, very lyrical. It takes place in, I believe, something like 10 days or something like that. But it has a deep message and it leaves you with some questions. I just really loved the way the author gives you a lot of questions to think about, but then there is no right solution to those questions. I don't know if it makes any sense. And then I really appreciated that at the end of this book you have actually an interview with the author with some very nice questions. I don't know, I just love this book and I hope to read more about this author. And if you've never read it, just give it a try. It's very, very short. It's less than 150 pages, so you may actually read it in one sitting. The next book that I've read was actually a huge disappointment for me. I've read this short story written by Marion Zimmer Bradley and it's The Gratitude of Kings. It's again a very short story, it's less than 150 pages and plus this format is square and so the pages are even shorter. I was very hopeful to enjoy this book because the first time I read it, I believe that it was 2005 probably, and I loved it. I wasn't able to remember anything about it, but I remember that I actually loved it because it was a fantasy and I was so excited about fantasy. But now I reread it and oh my god, how many things may change. Now I ended up rating this book 2 out of 5 stars and I was even tempted to rate it 1 star because the setting is interesting, it's a simple fantasy story, you have some magic, you have a princess and a king and a kingdom and everything fancy like that, but the final message of this story was so horrible. like. I was literally out of words at the end of it 
and I was staring at the pages and saying like what it's not possible that it finished like that no there has to be more there has to be more because this ending is just horrible and I'm speechless the message that it conveys is awful like really really awful so yeah this wasn't the best reread for me I still love the cover the cover is so lovely I love it so much but this book I'll probably consider to get rid of it at the end I really cannot appreciate the content of this story so I will probably sell it or give it away to a second-hand bookshop because really it was a huge no for me Fortunately, my last book saved the day in this case and I read Chocolat, written by John Harris and it's the first book in a trilogy, I believe. I always thought that it was a standalone, but apparently it's not. And I loved this book so, so much. I ended up rating it 5 out of 5 stars, so it's quite rare for me right now to rate a book that high. But I really believe that it's a book that I will reread in the future and I do believe that it's a book that gives you a different kind of meaning each and every time you read it and the characters were amazing. It's a book that's character driven and the characters in this book are truly amazing. You actually feel like if you're living in the town that's described in this story. I do believe that the story takes place somewhere between 1950 and 1960 and it follows our main protagonist who is a single mother with a six years old girl and they move to this small town in France and she decides to stay there for a little while and to open a chocolate shop and the community in which they're staying is very close and there are a lot of mixed relationships among all of the different characters. They are not very tolerant, they are not very welcoming and her arrival starts to slowly change things in a very, at the beginning, in a very subtle way but then it's more and more evident and I loved so many characters in this book, they were so vivid and those that I hated, I hated them so much with so much passion that actually I ended up rating this book 5 out of 5 stars because for me it was really worth it. I'm not sure if I will give a try to the second book, I'm a little bit afraid that it will ruin in the first one. I don't know. My friend is reading it right now, so I will see what she'll tell me about it and then if she likes it, maybe I will give it a try. I'm curious, but the ending was actually quite perfect like that for me. So we will see how it will go. So this was it for my Cosiathon wrap-up. Let me know if you've read any of these books and let me know how your Cosiathon went, if you enjoyed it, if you relaxed a little bit more. So this was it for this video, I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon. Bye! Ciao!